So today I'm going to be trying to answer the question, how do search engines work? So search engines are something that we interact with basically every day of our lives, whether it be to check the weather forecast, find something new to watch, or to research information for a project. They shape the very way we interact with the internet and in turn control what is accessible to us. But how do these systems actually work? How can they provide millions of results in less than a second? And how are they able to filter and rank the results most relevant to our queries? These are what I aim to, these are the questions that I'll aim to answer today. The first step for any search engine is it for to is for it to extract the knowledge it needs to search over. This process for a search engine such as Bing or Google involves scouring the internet, cataloging every all the information on every site, including the text, videos, pictures, and metadata. In this process, interactive code such as JavaScript is also run, and all this information is logged and recorded. This process is called crawling, and for internet search engines, it occurs on a massive scale. The process is completely automated and performed by bots called crawlers. These crawlers work in parallel as a swarm, constantly scouring the internet for new sites to extract their information from or to update the knowledge from sites that have been updated since their last visit. The process is facilitated through two different methods. Firstly, a website owner can provide a sitemap which tells the crawlers the URLs of the different pages they wish the crawlers to crawl. However, crawlers can also find URLs embedded in pages that have already been crawled, which can then be scheduled to be crawled later. Website owners can also make use of a robot.txt file to tell crawlers not to uh, crawl certain pages. As mentioned, the crawlers work in parallel and use a queue of URLs waiting to be crawled. The crawlers then each pick up a URL from the queue, crawl the page, and through this process, potentially add URLs back to the queue to then be crawled. Once the crawler has finished crawling the page and logging the information, it then returns to the queue, takes another URL off the top of it, and begins to crawl that page. This process is then repeated until all the pages have been crawled. Through this process, millions of websites can be efficiently crawled. But then what occurs with all this data? Once a search engine has crawled all the websites, it needs to store this information in a manner that is efficient to search through. This process is called indexing. Through indexing, all the documents crawled are reduced to a set of terms contained within them. This process involves scanning through the, the information and analyzing it, focusing on key content such as text, videos, images, and metadata. This is often done by focusing on key HTML elements, such as the titles, headings, or alt tags for media content. All this information needs to be stored in an efficient and searchable manner. One way to store this information is through a structure known as an inverted file. With an inverted file, instead of storing which key terms are in each document, we flip it around and store which document contains each key terms. This can be thought of as a hash map type data structure and allows for super fast retrieval of documents based on the search terms within them. During this process of extraction and indexing information, there are several techniques we can use to enhance the functionality of our search section. These focus on cleaning the data and making the index more efficient and streamlined. Once the first method is called case folding. With case folding, we simply convert all the text in our uh, scanned information to the same case. This process reduces letter redundancy and makes our index more uniform. Another important technique is stemming. With stemming, we aim to convert different forms of the word to the same root form. This ensures words with the same meaning are indexed together. An example of this is the word creating or creative being stemmed to the word create. Additionally, we can also remove stop words. Stop words are words like in, a, uh, an, of, or on, etc. That and their removal can further refine our data set. These words are typically not relevant to the content we are indexing, and then thus removing them can help improve our search accuracy. Finally, we can also use thesauri, which can enhance search functionality by grouping together synonyms, and similarly to stop words, or this can clean our index as we can group words with the same meaning together. By using this, these techniques, techniques, we can create a more effective system for retrieving information, ultimately, ultimately providing our users with more relevant search results. Now that we have all our information cleaned and indexed, we need to determine how to search through it to present our user with the information most relevant to the query. To do this, there are several different methods, with one of them being PageRank. PageRank is an algorithm developed by Google founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin. 
and operates on the principle that the internet forms a collection of interconnected nodes. By analyzing these links and tracking them, we can ass assess the significance of different web pages based on the quality and quantity of the links that point towards them. Pages are thus considered an authority on a topic if they are pointed to by many other pages and if the pages that point to them are also of high importance. On the slide, you can see an example of the PageRank algorithm. Initially, we initialize all our nodes values to one over five, to one over n, which in this case is five since we have five nodes. Now we wish to calculate the new value of each of our nodes. If we look at node A, we see that it has two incoming links, one from node D and one from node E. So these are the two nodes that node A will get its new value from. If we look at node D, we see it has three outgoing links. Thus, node A will get a third of node D's value of a fifth, which can see over here in the calculation. Next, if we look at node E, we see it has just one outgoing link. Thus, node A will get all of node E's value of a fifth. So if we add those two values together, we can see that node A has a value equal to four over five, which would be its page rank. This process would then be repeated for all the nodes in our network, and many iterations would be performed until the values of the nodes stabilize. In more complex implementations, the formula is also adjusted to include a dampening or jumping factor, which can be used to better scale the ranks. While the system is great for highly interlinked networks such as the internet, it can be open to exploitation, where spammers can create networks of low quality websites that all point to each other, leading to the website's page rank being artificially inflated. It is for this reason that modern search engines make use of other mechanisms in, um, combined with PageRank to rank their results. The final aspect to consider in a search engine is how do we determine how good our search engine is? In practice, this process is undertaken through sampling thousands of queries and analyzing their results for relevance by experts. But during this analysis, there are two key terms we wish to consider, recall and precision. Recall measures the completeness of our search results. It tells us, of all the relevant documents in our collection, how many were retrieved by the search. Thus, high recall means that our search engine is good at finding all the relevant documents for our query, even if it also retrieves some irrelevant ones. On the other hand, precision measures, measures the relevance of our retrieved results. It answers, of all the documents retrieved by the search, how many are relevant? Thus, precision means our search engine is good can return mostly relevant results and minimizes false positives. Precision and recall often work in contrast of each other, but it's desirable when designing a search engine to have both high recall and high precision. Thus, search engine engineers need to carefully balance these two factors. On the slide here is an example of how we would calculate recall and precision for a simple example. Assume we have a collection of 10 documents five of which are relevant as determined by experts and five of which are not relevant based to our query. We then perform our query on our search engine and it returns four relevant documents and two non-relevant ones. We now wish to calculate the recall. recall. So for the recall, we take the four relevant documents that were retrieved by our search engine and divide by the total number of relevant documents in our collection, which were five. This gives us a recall of 0.8. Both of these values are scaled from zero to one. There's a value of 0.8 tells us the recall for our search engine on this query was pretty good. Now we look at precision. For precision, we again take the number four, which is the relevant documents returned by our query. Instead, this time we divide it by the number of documents which were returned by our query, which was six. This gives us a precision of 0.667 recurring. This tells us the precision of our search engine is not as good. This process can then be repeated for multiple queries to determine how accurate and precise our search engine is by looking at the average values. We can also actually look at the average values for the at different um, number of search results to determine if our search engine is able to put the most relevant values first. Search engines are undeniably a fascinating system that we interact with daily in our lives. They are our gateway to the internet and enable us to get information precisely when we need it. We, however, have to entrust them with the task of supplying us information properly and ensuring that the information they present to us is relevant to what we have searched. Thus, I hope I've provided some brief insight into how they function. Thank you.